And that's what I did. But it isn't about me. Let's talk about me. I'm here to answer your question. If you've got kids, I've got AIDS. This may sound okay. This might sound a bit subjective, but what kind of role do you enjoy playing the most? Sort of like a storyteller or villain or any other roles that you've taken up? I like the voices that make me laugh. So, for example, me from Muscle. Just doing this voice and having this voice come out of me makes me laugh. So, the voice makes me laugh. We're halfway there. But I love working in general, and obviously great characterization and great writing. But for me, a great voice. Right? So I, oh, Tamara Jones, a bad catch. This voice makes me laugh. <laughs> and that's that. Hi, Mike. Hello. Nice to meet you. Um, I've seen you in uh, uh, three things so far. There's the Sonic, I've seen you in Ultimate Muscle Age, so I've also seen you in Berserk. And um, all the voices I really like. Well, I have practiced yelling at two small children, um, and it does get a little stressful. The key thing is to make sure you're drinking a lot, and if you've got a lot of yelling stuff to do, do it late in the day or especially late in the week, because for the next morning or the next, maybe the next entire day, I'll sound a little deep in the voice a little bit. Um, but rest in between is very important, and drinking a lot of water while you're working. But otherwise, according to my uh, ear, nose, throat professional, who I saw just the other day, that he scoped me because I was a little funny, a little mucus He uh, stuck the tube down to the look. My larynx looks great. I would have brought some shots, but uh, yeah, so, so far, so good. Question? Question? Oh, yeah. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, just wondering if you've got any voice acting bloopers that you've tipped the crowd on. Uh, most of the best ones are unpickable and unshareable. But yeah, there are a couple uh, on the end of some shows like uh, Twin Signal, another pure anime, uh, and uh, Demon Fighter Kojo. We've had some um, outtakes at the end that are very cool. Um, the games haven't started doing the outtakes yet. I would like to think that they would in the future. Um, but usually when I'm messing up, I make sure that the entire room knows that I messed up. So I'll launch into song, or just do wacky voices. Or my favorite little thing, which is what a stage actor would do, is called the line, which when you're sitting with a script in front of you, is stupid, so I do it. Line! And someone was asking me the other day in a session, why do you do that? Cause it's funny! But I'll just burst into show tales! Stupid stuff. But, yeah. What got you into voice acting? I have been a radio fan ever since I was a child, back when radio was better. Um, and I grew up listening to wacky stuff, radio dramas, and wacky disc jockeys and their voices. And I realized something just caught my ear with the way they could paint a mental picture on the radio. And ever since a child watching cartoons and hearing all the legends of Mel Blanks of the world and Doss Butler's, I'm thinking, I can kind of do that. So I got into radio for a while. And what I really realized about radio, although I can be in this jockey and say, hey everybody, it's 7, 20, 25, 7, here's for your famous for less talk. That got old for a while. But one thing they make you do in the States as a disc jockey when you're not announcing records is they have you record commercials because it doesn't cost them an answer. So I realized what I enjoyed was doing the wacky voices in the commercial. And eventually radio started to turn very corporate and uh, less friendly to the individuals. So I left radio and started doing voice acting the whole time. And that's been great fun. Drop the corner for you. Just hand it Mr. Pollock. Yes. We've got a personal request for you. And feel free to say no. This is Zota. We are working on a new comedy video together that's based on one family in fun. And I was hoping if you could please from Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh. In that grand voice. I can't do a neck grand voice without getting into trouble. But uh, Meat's been off the air for 10 years. I can do Meat's voice. We'll go for that. I'm not so 
against him, eyes closed, my nose in his throat, drinking in his sexy Christian and spiced musky body wash, fragrance. my head on his shoulder. I let my mind drift, and I allow myself to fantasize that he loves me. Oh, and it's so real, tangible, and a small part of my nasty, hoppy subconscious acts completely out of character and dares to hope. I'm careful not to touch his chest, but just snuggle in his arms as he holds me tightly. All too soon, I'm torn from my impossible daydream. We are home, Christian murmurs. And it's such a tantalizing sentence, full of so much potential. Home with Christian, except his apartment is an art gallery, not a home. Taylor opens the door for us, and I thank him shyly, aware that he's been within earshot of our conversation. But his kind But his kind smile is reassuring and gives nothing away. Once out of the car, Christian assesses me critically. Oh no, what have I done now? Why don't you have a jacket? He frowns as he shrugs out of his... At what? Oh, as he shrugs out of his and drapes it over my shoulder. Relief washes through me. It's in my new car, I reply sleepily, yawning. He smirks at me. Tired, Miss Steele? Yes, Mr. Gray. I feel bashful under his teasing scrutiny. Nevertheless, I feel an explanation is in order. I've been prevailed upon in ways I never thought possible today. And see. I feel so cheap in the middle of a refreshing shower. <laughs>